Now, Hosea was a prophet from God. He wasn't a false prophet. He was a true prophet from God. But sometimes God had prophets do some really strange things. There was one prophet that God said, I want you to lie on your left side for many days. And so he did. I can't really illustrate it here. But he laid down on his bed and he laid on his left side and he stayed on his left side for several days. And after that, God told him, I want you now to lay on your right side for many days. And he did. What was the point? God had a point to that. God had Hosea do something that was almost really crazy. God told him, I want you to marry a woman who's going to be unfaithful to you. I want you to marry a woman who's going to cheat on you. Do you know what that means? To marry a woman that's going to cheat on you? A woman that doesn't like you. She embarrasses you. She, it would be a woman who goes around with other men's dinner. Take that down, please. Take it down, please. A woman that goes with other men besides her husband. Or how about a man who cheats on his wife? It's a man who goes to other women. That's insulting. If you're, a, if you're a, a spouse that's being cheated on, that's insulting. It's an insult. And so that's called unfaithfulness. And if you're on the wrong side of that, you're, you're hurt. You're hurt very badly. Now, if you're on the other side, because there is no right side of it, but if you're on the side that's doing it, then you're the one that's causing hurt, and you're going to be hurt too. But God told Hosea, I want you to marry a woman that's going to be unfaithful to you. And so he did. Hosea married an unfaithful woman. And together they had a son. And God gave, God told Hosea to give the son a name. And that son was, the name of that son was supposed to remind the king of his failure to serve God. And that God was going to judge the king. But then they had a daughter. And God told Hosea to name this daughter. I the name meant. I mean, the name was called Lo Rohama. They, they had some really strange names back then. Lo Rohama was her name. But see, her name had a meaning. Her name meant, I'm not going to have mercy on you anymore. I'm not going to have mercy on you anymore. That's what her name meant. Lo Rohama. And then they had a third child, and it was a little boy. And they said... God said, I want you to name him Lo-Ami. Now, Lo-Ami means I am not your God. I will not be your God, and you will not be my people. And then, Hosea's wife took off on him. And she started going with other men. She started running around with other men. And it got to the point where she was actually a slave to those other men. Now, can you imagine how Hosea must have felt? His own wife, the woman that he loved, left him. She abandoned him. She wanted nothing more to do with him. She told him that she loved him, but she didn't. And instead, she went off with another man. Can you imagine how hurt Hosea must have been? A whole bunch. He was very hurt by it. But God told him, go after your wife. 
And he did over and over again. At one point, she had been sold into slavery and he had to buy her back. And God said, Hosea, this is what Israel is being like. You see, because the people of Israel were not serving God anymore. They said, you know what? God, we remember all the great things that you did for us. How you brought us out of Egypt. You split the Red Sea for us. You brought us into the land of Canaan. A land that flows with milk and honey. Our own land. A place where we would, where we would be prosperous. And you drove out all our enemies before us. And all you asked is that we worship you. And they said, you know what? We don't care about that. We're not going to worship God. We're going to worship the gods of this land. We're going to worship the, we're going to worship the idols. Because they, let, they allow us to do what we want. See, it wasn't so much that they were worshiping idols. They were worshiping themselves. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. Let me ask you a question, Hadassah. Have you ever wanted to do something and your parents said no? It's no fun, is it? You don't like it. You want to do what you want to do, right? Yeah. But then you do what with your parents? Argue. You argue with them. <laughs> but in the end, what happens? You get a no. You obey your parents. Yeah. I hope you do, right? Yeah. Right? You, <laughs> when, you, when you argue your parents, you get punished. Yeah. You go to your room. But if you're smart, eventually you come around and you do what your parents tell you to do. It's not what you wanted to do, but you see, your parents love you. They love you very much. They love you very much. They want what's good for you. Sometimes it's not what you want for yourself. There's a whole lot of things that I wanted to do that my dad and my mom wouldn't let me do. And I had to say, yes, I'll obey you. I didn't want to, but I did. Because if I would have rebelled and gone off and done it, I'd have gotten in a lot of trouble. When we serve God, we don't always get to do what we want to do. Do you know why? When you call somebody God, that means he is in charge. charge. Or, to put it a different way, he is the boss. He is the boss of you. What? He's your boss. He tells you what to do. And if you don't like it, go talk to the boss. Here's the thing, though. God loves you. And the reason why God stops you from doing things that you want to do, safe. to keep you safe, it means because it's going to get you in trouble. It's going to lead you to a place that you're really going to be sorry. There are many people out there, and you see them on the, you see them on the street corners. There are people out there that made bad choices. And they wish they can get out of it, but they can't because they're stuck. God tries to stop us from getting into those situations. Now, Hosea loved his wife, Gomer. That was her name, Gomer. He loved her. He loved her very much. He wanted to stop her from leaving him. He wasn't able to do that. I'm sure he must have pleaded with her, no, honey, please don't leave. No, don't go. No, you're going to only get yourself into trouble if you do that. And she wouldn't listen. 
And she ended up getting in a lot of trouble to the point where she was actually a slave and he had to come and buy her back. It broke Hosea's heart. And it's the same way when we won't obey God. God loves us. God loves us very much. And he wants us to obey him. And he wants us to serve him. Because if we do, he's, gonna, he's going to make wonderful things happen for us. But if we say, no, I don't want to serve a, we, no, I don't want to serve God. I want to do what I want to do. That breaks God's heart. I'm going to serve other gods. Now, we don't have we don't have the gods of wood and stone like they did back then. But you know what? You know what gods we do have today? What's a god that we have today? Hmm? I didn't hear you. What? Yeah, what's a false god that we have today? I can't hear you. Buddha? That, yeah, that's a false god, but there are other false gods that even we have, even people that call themselves Christians set up false gods. You know what the biggest one is? I don't want to serve God because I want to make a lot of money. And serving God is going to keep me from making a lot of money. There are people that call themselves Christians that do that. I'm not going to serve God because God won't let me do what I want. I want to go out and have fun all the time. And doing what we want is a false God. And when we do that, that breaks God's heart. Just like I don't have her name up anymore, but Hosea's wife, Gomer, broke his heart. She broke Hosea's heart. When we disobey God, when we decide that other things are going to be more important in our lives than God, we break God's heart. Because just like Gomer, we're being unfaithful to God. When we refuse to do the things that God wants us to do, what are the things that God wants us to do? He wants us to pray. He wants us to read our Bibles. He wants us to go to church. He wants us to serve Him. And when we refuse to do that, that breaks God's heart. Now, does God stop loving us? No. He always loves us. Never. What was the last song that we sung today? Love. Your love never fails. It never gives up. Never runs out on me. Right? God's love never fails. Even when our love fails Him, we stop loving God, He never stops loving us. Even when we give up on God, He never gives up on us. Even when we run away from God, and last week we... We had a lesson about a person who ran away from God. Does anybody know who ran away from God last week? Jonah. Jonah. How'd that work out for him? Not too well. Not too well, did it? Where did he end up? In a fish. In a fish. We, we think it's a whale. It's I'm, a big I'm, fish. We're just going to call it a fish. The Bible says a fish, but you know what? There aren't a whole lot of fish that can swallow a man. I'm content to say it was a whale. Yeah. Fish. I'm, I'm content to say that. Um, you want to say fish, you go ahead and say fish. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Jonah decided he didn't want to obey God, and he ended up in a fish. He ended up in he ended up in some animal's belly. That's not where I want to be. Didn't work out for him too well, did it? Didn't work out very well. It doesn't work out for us when we run away from God. But God never stops loving us. Even when, and when Gomer left Hosea, she ended up being sold as a slave. Things didn't work out very well for her. But God never stopped loving her. And Hosea never stopped loving her. Now, I don't know what happened. The Bible doesn't tell what happens in the end, whether she ended up staying with him or not. 
Well, we know this, that Hosea was acting just like God. God, uh, Hosea went to great lengths to get his wife back. He repeatedly went after his wife to the point where he even bought her back from slavery. God always runs after us. He always comes after us. Now, does that mean, oh, well, we can do whatever we want. God's going to come after me. No. No, because sometimes we get ourselves in a spot where he can't come after us. Every one of you has had a good foundation. The fact that you're here this morning means that you have a good foundation in God. And I want to encourage every one of you to stay true to God. As you grow up, stay true to God. There's going to be, when you get bigger, there's going to be a whole lot more distractions to try to pull you away from God. You know what's one of the biggest distractions that try to pull a person away from God? Money. Money is one of them. Money, money is a huge one. But you know what? There's another one. Miss Faith is holding this up. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking something a little more. Yeah. The, we get involved with things like games. We get involved with all that sort of stuff. And it, it takes our mind off of God. It takes our mind off of it takes our mind off of reading God's Word. It takes our mind off of praying. But as you guys get even older and you younger kids aren't going to relate to this too well, but the old ones are. For you girls, there's that boyfriend. For you boys, there's that girlfriend. And sometimes people will come into your life and you decide, wow, I like that person. But they start to try to pull you away from God. And you have to make a choice. God or that person. God is the right choice. It's not an easy choice to make, though. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not an easy choice. I know too many people that chose wrong, and they ended up stopping serving God. Stay faithful to God. It breaks His heart when we don't. All right. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank You for this Word. I thank You for this lesson. I ask you, Lord, that you would touch every heart of every child here. And Lord, they may not fully understand what it is to be faithful or unfaithful. But as they grow, I ask you to show them. Show them how it, it pleases you when we serve you and how it breaks your heart when we don't. Show them how your love always comes after us. That you're always speaking to us, always trying to get us to do the right thing. Lord, I pray that you would put into every heart that they would stay faithful to you, that they would obey you. Even when it means that they don't get to do the things that they want to do. Lord, that they would truly see what it means to serve God, meaning that they don't serve themselves. Lord, I pray your blessings upon every, everyone here this morning. And I ask you, Lord, to, to keep them as we go to our separate houses to keep every one of us. Keep us in your love. Bring us back again into your house next week. In Jesus' name we pray.